Hi there. Today we're taking a look at learning model-based planning from scratch um, by DeepMind. So as a recap, what is model-based planning? Basically a model, uh, also called an environment model, is just kind of a black box thing you can imagine um, where you have a state of your current environment. You put it in there and you have an action that you want to take. You put it in there as well. And the environment model tells you what the new state S prime here, and possibly also the new reward um, for taking that action is going to be. So this, um, of course, it's always good to have such an environment model uh, because you can use it to plan ahead. Um, but the authors here question, how do you plan uh, and propose a new algorithm to learn this planning for now? People have mostly used kind of heuristics to plan uh, either things like A star search, where if you have a maze and you want to go here, then you kind of have a heuristic, say, the distance between the two points, but there's kind of walls in between. Uh, so you try to go there, but then there's a wall and in, you kind of explore around it. So these are kind of the techniques that have existed so far. Also, we've seen stuff like Monte Carlo tree search for AlphaGo and um, other things like this that are not really learned. So this kind of uh, paper pros a mechanism to learn how to plan using such a model. Um, so basically they devise an, an algorithm or a framework, you can say, where they have this, um, what you see here, this schematic uh, this schematic tells you that you have this thing called a manager. Let me just uh, quickly bring up my comment thingy thing. All right. So you can see here, there is this kind of manager and this manager can decide to imagine or act. Um, if it acts, then it simply takes kind of the current state and all the things that happened so far um, and decides on an action to do in the world. And then it kind of trains on the action like classic reinforcement learning. But if it decides to imagine, um, it can use its model of the world, its imagination model to perform an action and see what would happen if it did that action. And um, it can then also use that, uh, append that to the memory and use it to further learn. Even though it didn't do the action, it can imagine what happens. So how can it imagine? The authors uh, in particular propose different methods of imagining. In this graph, you see their proposed methods. Um, the first two methods basically, so here if every row is a method of imagining. Um, the first method, the one step imagining, simply means you have the current state of the world, which is the gray blob here. And what you do is you always go from the current state of the world, imagine one step ahead. So basically you select the state to imagine from, you imagine one step. And if you if you decide to not take an action after that, but imagine again, because maybe you're not sure yet what you want to do, so you want to imagine another action, um, you would again go from this initial state. So this in the horizontal direction is time, um, time, internal time, basically. You would again go from this state, imagine another action based on it, and so on, imagine another action. Uh, until you're satisfied, you've imagined enough so you can actually take a real world step. Um, in contrast, the end step strategy. So these are hard coded strategies, as you can as you can see. Um, it's the the learned part is which action should I take. The uh, hard coded part is where do I base this action off. The end step uh, strategy also selects the first state at first, imagines one action on top of it, but then always selects 
that new imagined action. So you can see here it selects this one to propose this action and then it selects that imagined action to propose yet another action. Uh, so you can see it kind of imagines one path into the future instead of many paths just one step ahead. And then lastly, this imagination tree strategy is basically the only one that's actually kind of a learned strategy where um, the manager can now propose any uh, previously imagined or real world states in order to imagine from. So you always have the current world state, which is the first node in the graph. You select it, of course, at the beginning of no choice. You imagine an action on top of it, but then you can select any of these two nodes to imagine from. And here, again, the first is selected, an action is imagined. Then you have three nodes. You can choose any of those where you want to imagine the next step. And here, the, in this example, the manager selects this state right here and try, he decides to imagine another action on top of it until it is satisfied and can then actually go over to plan uh, to, to actually perform an action in the real world. So if you, if you then decide to do an action in the real world, um, what, you wanna, what you can do is you can take all of the things you've imagined and use that. So you see in this pathway here, this flows back to the manager. At some point it decides, okay, I've imagined enough and we can um, use all of these imagined steps in order to take a real world step. And after the real world step, the entire thing starts again. Um, so that's how it learns to plan, especially interesting, of course, is this um, this imagination tree strategy, where it's actually learned to, to where it actually learns to plan ahead. Um, so the model is described in detail uh, in a formal manner, and then it already goes over to experiments, and there's this kind of spaceship tasks where you have to. Um, there's pictures. You have to get the spaceship to move around stuff and uh, around these asteroids and get a reward. Um, so you can see different imagination kind of uh, projectives here in the top row. You see the red ones is uh, the kind of executed actions. The blue ones are imagined ones and you see the tree it's constructed. So first it takes an action right here, just without imagining. Then it, it imagines one step, but then decides to take another action. It imagines two uh, actions, but decide and decides uh, on a third one. So, and you see to the left um, in, in this picture, you see the first action. Then it imagines one action and decides to take an action and it imagines two actions and based on these imaginations I'm gonna guess it's fairly satisfied with the one that's very close to the target um, and it can then take an action. So you see it's uh, pretty smart in that it sees that the second imagined action is fairly close to where it wants to go and it doesn't need to imagine yet another action um, that then actually hits the target. It can go over to performing the action right away because the imagination gives enough information. Um, so the, these kind of things are pretty cool to look at and um, check out the more experiments if you want to know. Here is uh, even more experiments. In discrete mazes, they feature multiple goals. They feature um, the, the system optimizing not only for its reward but also for kind of internal costs so ha having a budget for imagining and optimizing not doing too many imagination step the kind of on this experiment the kind of thing that bugs me here is the fact that um, they didn't actually use the full imagination tree uh, algorithm but uh, the manager only selected from what you can see here. So act is act 
do an actual action, then SJ0 is the kind of the first imagined state and SJK is kind of the last imagined state. Um, so basically the, uh, the, the manager can only choose between actually acting, then doing kind of this one step strategy and then doing kind of this end step strategy uh, in each step. So it kind of limits the, the way it can, it can plan, but I'm gonna guess that it did this because otherwise it can have trained the model. And it seems a pretty reasonable uh, simplification to make in order to get this to work. Also, um, check out the paper if you want to see how all of these different parts are implemented. Of course, you can, you can guess most of them are neural networks and um, it's pretty standard so far. And check out for the additional experiments. They're pretty cool. And see you next time.